if you've trundled around the internet for as long as I have, you may have come across this 1990 store poster from Nintendo, correcting their users on how to use the word Nintendo. While this ad may come across as Mario lecturing your grandmother with a grammar lesson, who went around calling everything gaming related Nintendos back then, and even when this image first hit the internet, it was just passed off as Nintendo's usual pomposity, arrogantly telling their fan base what they can and can't do. It does, however, have a rather more personal reason from the company. Now, one might think, surely calling everything Nintendo would be highly beneficial for the big N. It's free advertising and muscles out the competition. And yes, while it would be more profitable to blitz out rival products, albeit a bit confusing, in the world of trademark law, however, it's quite literally the worst possible thing that can happen. You see, to receive a trademark for your product, service or company, it has to be a highly specific word or words to describe it. For instance, you could never trademark the term video game, as it's not only an incredibly broad term to begin with, but it's also part of the public lexicon, a phrase that everyone uses to describe the medium. This all stems from the 1946 US Fritz G. Lanham Trademark Act, where section 15 contains the clause, no incontestable right shall be acquired in a mark which is a generic name for the goods or services or a portion thereof, for which it is registered. Which in other words means, as long as your trademark is unique and remains unique, you're golden. However, unfortunately for businesses, the English language is one that constantly evolves and expands. Even in the past 20 years, multiple product names have become part of the lexicon. I mean, how often have you looked at an image you suspect is fake online and said, that looks photoshopped? Or when asking to search for information to Google it. And like Nintendo, both Adobe and Google have made public requests asking their users to alter their phrasing, fearing the same loss. So when a trademarked word does become part of the public lexicon, it's then regarded as being genericized. In other words, an adjective becomes a noun. And when that happens, its usage can be legally challenged by anyone. For example, as recently as 2019, Apple lost the rights to trademark the term app and app store after being challenged by Amazon in court so they could use the phrases on their range of tablets. Even huge brands such as Coca-Cola are currently on shaky ground to lose their trademark of Coke, as a huge majority of people will request for Coke at a restaurant, even though they're asking for any cola drink, not specifically Coca-Colas, as it's something the lexicon has evolved into describing the beverage. No matter how many times your waiter responds, will Pepsi do? So with such a trademark potentially falling into the public domain back then, Sega could have legally called their console the Nintendo Saturn, or Sony could have called their console the Nintendo PlayStation. Well, yeah, but you get my point. However, from suing everyone from Blockbuster from renting their titles, to companies that produce their own cartridges. Losing the trademark to Nintendo is what the company literally feared the most from their market dominance back in 1990. Long story short, if you don't want everything in gaming to be branded as Nintendo in the future, whether the company made it or not, next time your gran asks if you're playing as Halo on one of your Nintendos, be sure to correct her adjectives. Or encourage her if you're a rather vindictive Sony or Xbox fanboy. Hello you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. And be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching. And until next time friends, I'm missing you already.